Welcome to another episode of the Pepe Soup Talk Show, where we bring to the table movers and shakers in African diaspora. We have two very special guests with us today who have a hair care platform. Uh, they're both uh, tech entrepreneurs. Uh, their company, Fellow, uh, has created a marketplace and uh, sort of a, a peer review system for uh, hair care products. Um, and we're excited to hear about their story, how the platform has come to be what it is today, and uh, sort of what their their goals and and, and the mission is for it um, as they as they look to take over the the, the hair care industry. So um, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. But you know, welcome to Pepe Soup Talk, uh, Jacqueline and Camille. Yeah, to deal with that, we have two powerful black women. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted Absolutely. to add that, you know. So that's a, it's a two powerful black women starting their yeah. own business. So take it away. Yeah, y'all. Well, I'm Camille, co-founder and CEO of Fellow for Everyone's Love of Hair and Beauty. And I'm Jacqueline, co-founder and COO of Fellow. Yeah, and just a little bit about, you know, who we are and our journey. So Fellow was really birthed out of the, um, you know, our own frustrations, just kind of navigating the hair care industry, navigating the beauty industry. And it, you know, like entrepreneurship ain't no joke, y'all. It took us a minute to really figure out what we were creating and why. And the origins really started with, um, you know, I was going natural, like all the hair up here, it, it didn't look like this way back when, but when I was going natural, it was really tough to find, um, you know, recommendations from people that, you know, I could relate to um, some products that I know would work well for me. And what ended up happening was, you know, there was just a plethora of information in so many different places, YouTube's bloggers, influencers, Instagram, now it's TikTok and everything. Um, but we also saw a growing number of these smaller independently owned hair care brands that were selling online. So me and Jacqueline, you know, we, we looked at each other with our little entrepreneurial spirits and was like, okay, there's a lot of movement going on in this. There's a lot of content being created. There's a lot of entrepreneurs that are rising up. What, what is our role in this? And so um, after years of really studying this industry, we were like, if we can create a social space where these conversations and discourse is taking place, we can gather the, the buyers, the consumers in one place where these growing entrepreneurs can get their products in front of. And so it started off with hair care, but since then we really saw this um, opening for specifically independently owned beauty brands. So now we, um, in our marketplace, we have anything from hair care, skin care, body care, all that good stuff. And, and yes, yes. So that's, that's who we are and what we do. Uh, that's cool. That's cool to hear. You know, I, I know that the hair care and beauty industry, I, I mean, it's so large and with, with all these different communities and sub communities within them. And so being able to create something that helps us sort of like facilitating and you know like convening um that's very very powerful and and i know that you guys have you guys have a, a mobile app too right like that can, can you talk about that process of creating the tech the technology for it and what it was like um in the earlier days before you guys had the, the actual app um and so, so more so like the i guess like the building the communities around around it and then sort of having an actual platform for the, for the communities sure i can start with some of the earlier days and camille if you want to tag in to talk about some of the more recent developments um i want to say like camille and i did a lot of research and really wanted to like lay the groundwork first before we got into any of the technical pieces. Um, so really just like trying to iron out a lot of different things. Um, one thing we have learned about entrepreneurship is it is definitely a journey. Um, and so there have been some highs, 
There have yeah. been, we don't want to call them lows. We don't call them losses. We call them lessons. Mm -hmm. And so really just learning about, you know, just like the process of working with people, us making sure that we are advocating for exactly what we need and yeah. what we want, um, really positioning ourselves like, no, we, we've done the research. We know what we're talking about. This is the vision. This is what we see and making yeah. sure that we were just staying really strong in that. Mm. Yeah. And to kind of supplement that too. So both Jacqueline and I are non-tech founders building a tech product. So we had a huge learning curve. I'm um, just like dipping our toes in this water. Like we beauty. Yes, we get it. But when it came to tech, no. So what that looked like for us was um, in the earlier stages, building community, going through like um, just building relationships in the industry, getting our name out there at different expos and events and whatnot. Uh, but then on the underground level, really hammering out what features of our app that we that our users would want to see, what features of this app that our seller selling partners would want to see. Um, and then taking that to um, different developers and seeing what they can do for us. And not going to lie, y'all, that first go around with getting the tech work done was yes. a huge lesson to just mm -hmm. point. Like we took the L, but we came out with a lot of knowledge. Okay. Um, and um, more recently, we brought on a tech advisor who really, you know, has our back and can navigate, you know, the decisions that are made when it comes to development. So now our platform is, is really dope. Y'all need to go check it out. But it's it feels a little like an Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, elements of um, a marketplace and gamification. And we can get into that later. Oh, for sure. For sure. And can you can you unpack a little bit about that process of creating the the app as especially that maybe first go around like you said it was a big it was a big lesson in that especially with you guys not having been uh like developers or or like be more like non-technical founders what what were some of the lessons in that and some of the challenges that you went through to um that you had to you know learn from yeah, so I would say um, one of the lessons that uh, we learned was you really have to have a clear vision, not only of what you want your app or platform or whatever kind of tech thing that you're creating, but you also need to get some informed advice from, I would say, user experience. The people, There are people that specialize in how web and media platforms should flow based on like human psychology. And so our initial go around, we were like, we got, we got the ideas y'all developers, let's build it. And then they built something kind of what we wanted, but it really did not, it missed the mark in a lot of places. Mm. Having a, um, an individual or a team that really could focus on the user experience like the flow, like the graphics, the visuals, that's really important to have on board and not just, you know, giving your money to somebody to build something because we found that people will take your money and build something, but it probably won't be what you want. Mm. So that and is have really your money. important. Yeah. Exactly. You can end up spending a lot too, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then just to continue to build on that key's question is that, and I think like, what is really resonating with you guys is like this is something that has always been stuck in your head. <laughs> this has always been part of the conversation and now building the infrastructure that comes with that. Um, so talk to us a little bit about how were you guys like able to really like the, the audience? What who is your targeted audience? And you talk a lot about having a clear vision. How does like having like a clear audience matches with your visions? And how, how were you guys able to actually like draft that with trying to get like literally investors into this? Oh, excellent question. So we have two main audiences because we are a social marketplace. So on the marketplace side, it's independently owned beauty brands. And I'll let Jacqueline, because Jacqueline deals a lot with the brands, um, explain who the, what that audience is. And then I'll talk about the users. Yes. So when we're talking about independently owned uh, beauty brands, a lot of the companies we're working with are less than three years in the business. 
Um, so we're, we weren't focusing on like the big box retailers. We really want to focus on people. We have a lot of local vendors. Um, and with doing our research, we're seeing that, you know, customers are wanting to spend their money more so with these independently owned brands. Um, so we did want to take, we know that, you know, the beauty industry, it's a $500 billion industry. And we really want it to focus specifically with these indie beauty brands. Yep. And then on the user side of the market, so our end users are the people that are participating in the, you know, uploading their videos, their tutorials, they're the ones making the product reviews and earning their curl coins and whatnot. But those are um, beauty enthusiasts that are in the millennial to Gen Z age range. Those are where the bulk of them are. Um, many of them are content creators. We wouldn't necessarily call them enthusiasts, but our earliest adopters are the ones that, you know, they're sharing their beauty content on Instagram and TikTok. They may have a YouTube channel. They may, you know, be getting some sponsored items from other brands uh, at this point. But the real core, again, is that they're beauty enthusiasts and they are, to Jacqueline's point, very much wanting to buy and try from these local brands. And uh, what is it? I want to say 90% of our brands are women owned and a good 80% are people of color owned. And so that really resonates with the community that we're building. And it's just cool to see like how each side wants each other and fellow is <laughs> just bringing them together. I mean, yeah, thank you. I, I mean, thank you. Thank you for sharing that because it's like you try to build a company, but you gotta have like it's like having a double vision, right? If you can't, you gotta have this balance. You can't be just strong in like the user side. Let's focus on the user because you live in a market where oh, let's build more user. It's almost like having an Instagram page. If you have a million followers, and then somehow like you know the people will start to recognize your success. But at the same time, you also have to think about like this is a business. Right. By balancing it out with like you know the the, the product, like you know the, the the people on the other side, so um, it's just been it's it's I think like this was a lot more complex than and <laughs> as you as you move into this and part of that sort of challenges on cold as you guys were like trying to go into this. So what were some of the emerging challenges uh, that you guys have to confront as you start to really tap into this business? Absolutely. And I know, and so in your last question, you talked about investors too, which we didn't comment on, but that definitely has been one of the challenges, like being able to clearly communicate what we're doing to the people that can help empower and invest and fund what we're doing. And so over the years, we, you know, kind of went from we're creating this social like app for beauty to we're creating a marketplace. No, we're creating a social marketplace that's marrying both the social interactions and where people can buy. Um, how do we do it? We do that um, through rewarding our users um, whenever they post their content in our community, make product reviews in our marketplace, and they can use those socially earned rewards to shop from these brands that are super, super dope. So it took us a minute to really um, not only like find our true voice in um, our origin, but our origin story, but also find our true like streamlined voice in what we're creating. So when we do um, or as we get in front of investors, they're like, oh, OK, $500 billion industry. This is what this specific market looks like. This is what the other market is doing. OK, you're bringing them together in an innovative way. I see what you're doing now. How do you make money? That's always the third question. So after it and so y'all know we make money in our marketplace. So every time something sells, that's that's our cash flow. Yeah, to to, uh, to Saku's point, you know, when you're dealing with a two-sided uh, business model like that, where you have the social side, you have the marketplace, um, it, it it's not easy. It, it can be it can be complex, and it could be it's not always e easy to like to sell that vision as well. And I'm sure that you know now you have the mobile app in place. It's it's, it's sexy, like it's you know people probably love like you know being on it, and then you know like the momentum starts, starts to shift. But like what kept the um what kept the faith like what 
what kept your faith like determination during those harder times where it was like you know you have this vision and like you, like you know like what you see and what you you're you know working towards um but may, may not have always been easy to get others to see you know where you were sort of coming from i know one thing for me is definitely the team like camille is my best friend like we were freshman year roommates we used to talk about hair and beauty care all of the time so this is like it's almost i obviously don't want to let myself down i don't want to let camille down so anytime there feels like there's a setback it's kind of just reminding ourselves like ah oh, remember when we had that math 103 midterm we were studying mm. for and that was really difficult <laughs> and it felt like a setback but we kept going so it's kind of just yeah. like i mean i get i feel like we work really well together and like feed off of each other's energy and so stopping quitting giving up has just never been an option yeah, yeah it's like when you are going through a journey by yourself you uh, I mean you could come out on the other side going through a journey with somebody that has your back it makes it much more you know doable enjoyable fulfilling like you can have somebody to celebrate those highs with you can have somebody to pick you up you know we have to pick each other up after you know some of the some of the L's that turn to lessons so yeah. that been helpful but then I would say um another thing that kind of really propelled us going forward is the feedback particularly on the brand side um of wow you guys are creating a space for us and I mean just to be able to see like we're working with other entrepreneurs we're entrepreneurs yes we're in tech but at the end of the day we're a platform for other entrepreneurs and to hear what how what we're creating is helping them. And even though, you know, we're not all the way where we want to be right now, yeah. they buy into our vision that really gives us, you know, the energy and motivation we need to keep it going. Cause you know, we got people that believe in us. Yeah. Right. And then just uh, speaking of belief, yeah. uh, that's a powerful word, right? You know, and that's, it's, it takes, that's what it takes for you guys to really uh, achieve your dream today. And, and the part of the, the fact that we're sitting here having a conversation about your uh, company, uh, it's a success itself. So, but I know you guys know each other since college. You really great friends. So, talk a little bit about like how were you able to separate like friendship uh, uh, from That's a good question. as a business partner and trying to really build this business. I'm just I'm gonna call this a business empire. You know, can you talk a little bit about that? How you guys were able to navigate? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, building an empire with your best friend is awesome. highly recommended. However, there are <laughs> anybody needs to be aware of like when it, going into business with anybody. And so it takes transparency. It takes, you know, a level of not only honesty from the, you know, mind, but honesty from the heart too. Um, and I think, you know, when you have two individuals that maybe not are friends or have been friends and they're in some kind of business relationship, you know, it's all a mental game. Like, hey, like, this is what we're doing. This is your land. This is ours. Jacqueline and I, we're, our energies are, you know, life. I mean, we've known each other for over a decade now. Like, yeah. it's so intertwined. Um, and so I don't think it's so much separating the one or the other, but when something happens or when one of us isn't doing like what we need to do it's like always that open honest communication that has made sure um where we're getting whatever we need to get done and, and then setting that expectation for anybody else that comes on board um so transparency and communication yep I, I would completely agree like we've had to have some of the talks where it's like okay these are the expectations. Like we need to make sure that we're on the same page. And if we're not like, that's okay, but we need to talk about it so that we know how to move forward. So. Transparency and communication. That's, that's a, uh, it sounds, that's the name of the game. The of the game. Yeah. Cause they say like uh, being in a business partnership, it can, it could be like being married, right? Especially when you think about like how much time and how much like, you know, Tommy maybe together you're working on on like the project or their endeavor. So it's um 
you know, you, you, sometimes you end up spending more time with uh, your, your business partner than you may, may, you know, with your spouse sometimes. So and that goes to uh, our next question about commitment. Um, so this is your baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I keep and Toby, uh, who's also here with us. We always talk about how like this, this podcast is this is our baby. You know, this is your guys baby. And um, how much of a time do you guys like invest into this? Like from like from the get go to where you're at now? And how has it like also impacted your personal life? Yeah, yo. <laughs> Is the right metaphor, like 100% accurate. Um, so in the earlier stages, um, Jacqueline's father, who's one of our advisors, strongly, he, his biggest thing was invest time before you just throw money at something. And so those early years were us really just investing time. Like I was in grad school, Jacqueline was in Teach for America. We were just kind of doing research you know, in our off time. So, you know, maybe like here and there. Um, but uh, after a couple of years after that, we were like, look, like stuff is happening. Or we got to put a stake in the ground. And so when we started, you know, allocating actual monetary resources to what we were creating, that was when we started, you know, being more intentional about what that time spent looks like. So probably anywhere between, you know, uh, five to, you know, 20 additional hours a week on top of the job. And at the time, you know, we were at that phase. I was um, in corporate America doing something I will never do ever again. But I remember being like, I'm not watching TV after work. I'm working on fellow. I'm not doing this on the weekend. Like I'm from, from like 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'm working on fellow. And I just became really disciplined on finding areas to cut out that, the extra stuff and uh, yeah. be intentional with it. And then it got to, I was like, look, I'm putting a fellow on the back, <laughs> putting a yeah. job and I was full time for a good minute. Um, and that period of being full time, I had to move back home to Cleveland where I'm still at with my incredible parents who yeah. <laughs> understand and support what I'm doing. So I'm blessed to have that type of support. But I was living my best life, making checks, like with a nice job. And so a lot of that um, I sacrificed. Uh, but in that period of time where um, I was able to be full time, Jacqueline supplemented, you know, um, in in other capacities because she has been full time employed since then. But uh, it did allow, um, you know, at least me to focus on being more strategic and building relationships and networking on all that stuff that happens that you just can't do with a full time job. So it's it's gone up over time. And then Jacqueline, like because she has been full time employed the whole way through. So I'll let you speak from your perspective. <laughs> yes, I, I think I had to, I just had to get very disciplined about being organized and knowing exactly like when I was going to do what, because yeah, at a point in time, I was in grad school with two part-time jobs and also doing fellows. So it really just came down to me prioritizing my time appropriately, uh, using my calendar on my phone, using my planner, like all of that and saying, all right, I know like this weekend, I'm devoting a five hour chunk just to working on fellows. So my, like, I felt like the way I work on fellow has been more like chunks of time with like getting it in where I can, you know, make sure I'm having the time to spend on it. Um, but like Mill said, she definitely put fellow on her back and was working on it full time. And so I am incredibly grateful for that time that was spent um, really making sure that we had everything ironed out. That's, that's, that's very dope. You know, it's, it's, it's very easy to see the successes and to see, uh, you know, everything above the iceberg, but it, it's easy, for, especially when people are looking from the outside in or aren't entrepreneurs themselves to, uh, it's very easy to, to overlook or, or not see everything below the iceberg and all the sacrifices and yeah, for sure. Um, can you guys go a little bit into the, the, the game design and the app itself. Like I know Camille started touching upon it, but like, uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, like the, the mechanics of the app itself and what it was like um, bringing that to life? Yeah. So 
um, users, they download the fellow app and they sign up for our reward system and which is called curl coins. So when they sign up, they earn 500 curl coins of dollars to be able to shop in the marketplace. And when they're on the platform, they can, they build, they create their own profile, just like any other social media. Um, and you are able to browse inspiration. You can browse content by different um, categories. So if you're a nail person, hit that nail category, boom, see all the nail inspo. If you're like hair care or hair, hair health, boom, hit that category, see all that great info. You can follow other people that um, share your similar interests, all that good stuff. Uh, and the cool part again too, so when our users do certain behaviors on the platform, like if we have a promotion going like, hey, it's Afro Friday, like drop your fro, like no matter what your hair looks like and we'll give you X amount of curl points, boom. People do it. We can deposit those coins right into their fellow wallet. Um, or if they um, bought something from the marketplace and it's like, ah, I love this so much. Let me go write a review. Boom. Yeah. You get um, rewards to, you know, for sharing your authentic and true opinion. And yeah, at any point in time, when you're in the app, you can click the marketplace button. You can see all of these really dope products from these truly inspirational brands and um, just feel confident buying from people that are doing something that's like good. So that's the general flow of how it works. And Jacqueline, do you want to touch on the VIF program? Yes. So VIF or very important fellow, that is our influencer program. And so that is for your beauty enthusiasts. They are able to get a product each month um, from our vendors that opt into the program, which the majority of vendors do, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then after being able to get the product, they are just expected to post content. So it can be a video, it can be a selfie, any type of picture, just something showing their engagement with the product, and then also leave a review. And so that works out well because influencers are getting to try products and post about it and review it. And vendors are also getting some more exposure with their brand. That's incredible. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> you have all these multiple actors, right? And you want everybody to win, right? Because I'm just also thinking because part of like creating an ad like this is like the downside could be it's all based on motivations. Like how do you get motivated people to get motivated to do something? Like, yeah. I love the curl point because I'm just like, yeah. Kiyo and I need to actually work on our curl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, we'll, we'll hook y'all up with a little coin. Yeah. But, but exactly. can, can you guys explain a little more on that? Like, I know you have uh, the curl point for like regular buyers. Every time you buy a product, you get a curl point. But you also have the, uh, the folks who literally drive the content, right? Um, and these are the incentive for them is like they could get recognized and drive like a brand for any of the business people. Uh, any other incentives like you guys are thinking about? How do you, because these incentives have to continue to evolve? Like, when do you guys get your idea? Like, what do you yeah. watch and attention to? You know, yeah. how do you keep yeah, it going? So, to your point, like, we do have multiple different actors within our user category. So, just to kind of break down, you know, who they are and how we're kind of aligning certain incentives. So we, the majority of social media people, they are consumers of content. They're not the content creators. They just want to like look and be inspired. Um, and so we anticipate that being the majority of our user base. Um, the next tier is our, um, I would say product junkies, the people that like absorb the content, but they're really obsessed with buying and trying new product. And then the top tier are those um, influencers or very important fellows who are more of the content creators. And we're kind of laying out the incentives for each one. Um, and so perhaps in the near future, um, we can have a program where those uh, product junkies, like that mid-tier that's like, I just love trying new product. Uh, if they're hitting a certain amount of curl points per month just with their activity, boom, you unlock free products to try each month. So building in an incentive like that, or perhaps 
you know, having the ability for some of our brands to appear in some retail locations where, you know, if you're a fellow user, you can look into and see what products are physically in a store um, under like the fellow little brand and use some of your curl coins in that in-person experience. And so we're always trying to find ways to kind of um, blur the line between being social and shopping because it's, it's blurring already, but we want to do it in such an immersive way where people are, you know, having like fun or like, oh, this is super dope. So yeah. more to come on all of that. Uh, that sounds very dynamic. I love all, all these creative ideas that you guys have implemented into the platform. Um, something I'm, I'm wondering about, because you mentioned uh, the technical advisor that you had when when uh, um, fleshing out the app. Uh, you've mentioned Jacqueline's dad as, a, as an advisor, too. Who are some of the people or even some of the resources or books or, you know, videos like, like, that you've watched or, or read um, that inspired you or that helped you throughout this journey? Yeah, so um, um, we, listen, resources are abundant, but you have to be willing to do the work (laughs) to get to them and Mm. consume them. And so I would say our journey to really tap into the resources started when we got serious about applying to opportunities. Um, Mm. But we literally cut out space and time to look to see, okay, what grants are, are dropping this month, what accelerator programs are dropping. And so we just got really regimented about applying to stuff. And we got into a couple of accelerators. The first one was called, uh, uh, it was powered by the um, Center for Creative Economy and it was called the Velocity Accelerator. They were super helpful. The second one we were a part of was Conscious Venture Lab out of Baltimore. Um, and we've done a third one called G beta that's under the generator brand. And more recently, we're now in a program called friends and family with this, um, dope organization called grid 110 in this, um, really, really awesome VC firm called Slauson and co and those different programs. I mean, not only do you get the resources from like the content they give you, you know, obviously watching like the Simon Sinek videos on what you're yeah. watching, why people buy from you, not the what or the how, you know, so that information, but really just being able to connect with like-minded entrepreneurs that are also going through the same ups and downs. So if you're an entrepreneur, definitely plug yourself into spaces where you can find your tribe because that is another source of motivation when the numbers ain't adding up right. When you made a mistake and now you're down in the mud. Like, believe me, every entrepreneur faces that. <clears throat> and when you can connect with them um, and share those experiences, it, it does something very cathartic for your soul. So, yes, I would say one more thing to add um, was the women's entrepreneurship class with e cornell so online Mm -hmm. i like we received a lot of different resources different articles um through that and also had a chance to be able to network with other entrepreneurs across the country that's cool that's cool now before we continue i just want to thank everyone who's tuned in with us uh for pepper soup talk we're here with uh two really great entrepreneurs jacqueline and camille uh, so if you like what you see so far, please make sure to uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, give this video a thumbs up uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and uh, st- stick with us for this conversation. Uh, so so um, I have to ask, because, you know, we're in 2022 now and, and technically, you know, we're still in the pandemic. Uh, but how has the pandemic been for for you guys, um, especially with building fellow, like did they add a, another layer of complexity? Um, and, and what was it been like navigating, navigating that? I think part of it, um, it's interesting because Camille and I and our other team member, we never all three lived in the same city. So we have been used to communicating on Zoom or a three-way phone call. Um, so that piece didn't necessarily change. If anything, to be honest, it it like re-energized me and refocused mm-hmm. me. Um, being in the pandemic also 
did a shift with my mind with time. Cause like, what yeah. is time? We were like <laughs> two weeks, felt like five years. Um, so I like, <laughs> for me, the, uh, like it, it honestly, it honestly strengthened me, I think in, in my ability working with fellow. Yeah. Same here. It was like the pen. Okay. So just to put things in perspective. So Late 2019 is when we launched the first iteration of the fellow app. And we were like, 2020 is in the bag. We about to do all the <laughs> things. Their we're vision, lining their up, you know, dollars that we've yes. never had. And we're like, oh. we're going to get out there. And then the world blew up. Like it was COVID. It was like black people dying in the street. It was like, just my mind was you know, like, I mean, it was just a lot to, to, to consume both being an entrepreneur, being a black person, being a woman, being like, you know, broke, but with big visions, like it it was hard to like really take it all in. And so what we ended up doing with 2020 was like taking a step back and being like, look, we can't go, we can't go outside. (laughs) Um, We really need to assess what can we do that's like really going to keep moving us forward. And so we took that time to really interview like the our, our potential users to really get to know our potential sellers and really do that customer discovery that nobody really likes to do or likes to talk about, but is so important to building a successful business. So we took that year to really dive deep into our customer discovery, apply to a lot of opportunities, and come out on the other side of like 2021 with a better platform, a better go-to-market strategy, a better understanding of who our target audience is. And so that pause really allowed us to take a breath of fresh air um, and do our do our due diligence to set us yeah. up for success. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Definitely. Right, and based on everything you guys have shared, um, for anybody who is just actually like oblivious, had no idea what your company is about, like, um, and they use it for the first time, like, you know, what are some what are some major takeaways? Like, do you guys want them to walk away? Yeah. So, um, major takeaway number one that we are more than just a beauty app. We're more than just a marketplace. We are a community that is designed to usher in a new era of inclusion in this space. So through all of our marketing, through all of our you know, strategic relationships that we're building, through all of the visuals, you're going to see very diverse looking human beings. And not just in skin tone, but in... Um, ability and size and all of these elements that right now are, you know, kind of like those inclusive, sexy things that like different brands that were nowhere near inclusive are trying to do now, that's rooted at our core. So we want people to come into this space knowing that it's literally designed with you in mind and you feel it from, you feel it in the most authentic way. Mm. And what about the little girls? Out there, you know, and little girls. girls out there, we you go through this phase where, like, you know, they're not proud or they're questioning their look, their hair, they're going through the, you know, um, what, you know, is there anything that you guys are doing to for the for the for the young, the next generations? You know, what are you guys trying to do with that? Because for me, when I look at your ad, I'm thinking about the impact that has on that one little girl that sometimes might have a bad hair day. She show up to school. <laughs> you know, yeah, no. I could just be That's- like, hey, go to fellow ad. And mm. they are like black women that look like you who are embracing their hair. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. We really see the conversation that we are beginning to facilitate in this authentic way and it's in this authentic space is to be this space where the next generation of young women can feel comfortable and confident about who they are. And so 
when so uh, Jacqueline and Zareen, our other business partner in this, we did like a little video piece on what beauty means to me. And all of us had three different perspectives of what beauty means to me. And that those are the messages that we hope to really um, resonate in the upcoming generation. And so I know for me, what beauty meant to me was um, being authentically who you are. And so now, no matter what you look like on the outside, look like, like oh, just on any given day, beauty is a state of being and you are it because you are you. And I know Jacqueline's was inner beauty is what resonates with her. And inner beauty was the thing that nobody can take away from you because it's at your core. And so these are like the elements that we're implanting the next generation. Mm, I love that. And I love that. And, and you started touching upon sort of the conversation that um, that fellow is, is starting to spark. When you think about where fellow was going and the vision that, that you guys have for it um, over these, let's say, next five years, like, like where where are you looking to take this? Like what what is that that, you know, that vision that, that you guys are working towards? Yeah. Yeah. So what we see and, you know, I, I'm going to be that one. Like I, I'm very much a spiritual person. So anything yeah. my team already knows too. So we meditate before certain calls, mm. we alignment, get our chakras and vibes right and whatnot. Okay. But I feel that um, what we're doing is, you know, much greater than you, who we are as individuals. Yeah. Um, and from like a five year standpoint, you know, being able to change on a broad scale and international scale, the narratives that are taking place in the beauty industry is going to go much further than skincare. It's going to go much further than makeup and all of these other physical aspects. Um, in five years, I see us being able to um, usher in a new era of people that have invested in fellow that are black and brown um, mm -hmm. are the ones that have come up because we came up you know we're being very conscious and intentional about how we raise money because we see not only the barriers to access that we have as entrepreneurs but the barriers to access for wealth building for um, black and brown people in America and so giving those individuals an avenue to invest in us early is the payoff that we are planning to make for all these individuals in the you know near term future uh and then also you know um in five years from now i really see us building a a, a legacy that rivals um you know some of the biggest like names in the marketplaces biggest names in the social media today but in the inverse way. Like we're not gonna be a unicorn. I don't like these, you know, terms that people made up and, you know, or like for 30 under 30, like all of these terms that are kind of built off of patriarchal like hierarchies, but mm. being the anti version of it that still did exactly what the other one's doing. So we won't be a unicorn. We will be a black Pegasus. <laughs> I like that. Yes, Black Pegasus. Yes. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Man, that, that, that is such an inspiring yeah. vision. Um, from now on, I'm going to be using that term, by the way, Black Pegasus. I, I yes. love that. I really love that. And, um, and I, and I think it's amazing that, you know, you guys are really building something that that's much bigger than, than yourselves. And that is also like really empowering, uh, you know, community um, to to also be able to to build um, in, in a in a in a way that they can fulfill their dreams. And um, and so, it's, you know, it's just, you know, shout out to you guys. And, and we're excited to, to uh, continue watching, watching your journey and, and then support it. No, it's, it's really powerful. Yeah. I think what you guys are doing is that you're really disrupting the market, right? Not only are you disrupting the market, you're creating an opportunity for new business comers, right? This is a space where anybody who has the hustle, they could also benefit from it. That's what I, that's what I love about what you guys are doing. And I think like, and I love just 
our generation trying to create like opportunity for everyone. The prior generation is much more like very like limited opportunity. The idea is, you know, you come in here, you're the spender, you just get what you need, but you're not benefiting and gaining anything from this. So um, I love this idea of the partnership that you guys are building with other minority um, business owners. So when I saw that, that really resonated with me. The other powerful thing is like you guys are two young black women, you know, who doesn't have a background in tech or business. Somehow you are creating a multi-million dollar company. Like what does that say about anybody who sitting out there watching the show and having a great idea in their head, right? Um, yeah. And you, you also building the capital, like Camille said, for the culture. You know, I think like black culture itself has always been the product and the driving force behind the greatest economy in the world. This economy that we live in, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's time like we actually capitalizing on that. Right? Yeah. And you guys are doing that. We can make money off on this. Yeah. Um, and you guys are setting that vision. And that vision is real. So thank you for, for sure. What you're doing. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Then, you know we are. So we're coming to the we're coming to the tail end of uh, of our conversation. There's a question that we like to to ask our guests, uh, and that is, uh, we want to hear this from from the answer from both of you. Uh, if you had to talk to your younger self, um, and so this is the the people you were before you started fellow to who you are now as you're continuing on this journey, uh, what advice would you, would you have? Um, not knowing the ups and downs you would go through, the, the challenges, um, and, and what it would be like building this company. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I know, um, let me Take see. Your time. Take your time. I feel like I, I would definitely tell myself to believe in myself more. And I know that's like a very cliche answer. Um, but part of what Camille was talking about with like my definition of beauty and really focusing on inner beauty just comes along kind of like with my own personal journey. Um, and I feel like confidence is so key. And so even when you were talking about like being a little girl growing up and not always feeling comfortable and confident going to school, like that was me. And so I would love to be able to talk to my younger self and really kind of just like remind myself who I am. Cause that, that's what it comes down to. So I, I would really be focusing on like confidence, capacity, loving yourself. Love that. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I would say for me, I would tell my younger self that <laughs> nobody is going to bet on you like you you're going to bet on you and like to think why not me I think our society gets into our minds at every level to kind of make you subscribe to these milestones and checkpoints and like you know we all went to a great school <laughs> you know we all like are highly educated um, but if I, if I can even tell like college version of me, it's okay to do what's in your heart and like continue to align with that, you know, because in my journey, a lot of my battles have been more so, huh, you know, like my parents pay for all of this education and I'm coming home to live with them or, you know, I, have all this student debt, like that I'm probably not going to use my degree for, you know, and just having these battles with what it, success looks like from a prescribed standpoint and what success looks like from my standpoint. And the more I started to align with that, the more things just started adding up, like the numbers started looking right, you know? And so I'll tell my I'm energy, sort of channel your energy and follow that. Wow. Powerful. Uh, I don't even know how, what to say after that. <laughs> no, 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 that's that's very powerful, man. Uh, great answer from both of you. Uh, Definitely. You know, my last question is going to be this. I know this is a, a market to uh, beauty, and sometimes when you think of beauty, you think of like uh, gender, soft for women and all that. So uh, how can uh, brothers out there, how can we support fellow? 
Well, I'm happy that you said that because, you know, the grooming industry is booming these days. And so along with all of these really great entrepreneurs that are creating stuff for um, women's needs, there are some incredible entrepreneurs that we're working with that are creating skincare lines specifically for men, um, for men of color that deal with hyperpigmentation or ingrown hairs and beer bombs and oils and whatnot. So y'all definitely can check out, you know, um, some of the, the brands that we're working with and support them and thus supporting us. But also, you know, just being advocates and champions of, um, you know, women in general, like men, y'all do a, a phenomenal job, like, you know, standing behind us when we are um, creating and doing our own endeavors. And, you know, all the men out there, like, we just want to be able to um, be supported and, you know, you have your little loudspeaker out. Give us some shout outs, too. Definitely, definitely. Shout out goes a long way. That's for sure. Now, before we close out, is there any anything that uh, either of you would like to just say to people tuning in, um, you know, that, that they may want to carry with them uh, on their entrepreneurial journey or uh, or their career journey um, before we before we close out. Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, if anybody that's tuning in that has an idea, because I know y'all all do. We all do. All of us. All of us have something within us that we kind of want to create because inherently we are all creators. It's okay to take your big idea seriously. Like that is probably the thing that I would say that thought changed my life. And if I could drop that in the audience, it's okay to take your big idea seriously. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll go back to a point I made earlier, no losses, only lessons. So take that idea, recognize it's a journey. Um, and at the end of the day, you learn, you learn from different parts of your journey and keep it, keep it pushing. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Yeah, no, this, this has been an honor to have you on our show and, yeah. and it's very inspiring for us too. Um, one, one last question. Um, where can people um, stay, stay engaged and, and you, know, you know, find out more about what you're doing? Absolutely. So definitely check us out on Instagram. So that's fellow, F-E-L-O-H. Remember, for everyone's love of hair. Uh, and with underscores in between, because somebody took the fellow handle. So <laughs> underscores in between. Um, check us out on our website, feloh.com. Um, you can check us out in the App Store and Google Play. Drop that F-E-L-O-H, download the app, get some really dope rewards. And if you're really interested in trying those free products every month, you can email us and let us know and we'll get you set up in the VIF program. Um, and you can email us at Camille at fellow.com or Jacqueline at fellow.com and we will get right back to you. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, thank you both. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, on this uh, talk show. Yeah. Sweet talk show. Yeah. Uh, we created this space to continue to highlight, uh, like I keep saying, the shakers and movers in our community, especially our Black community. It's always powerful for me when I when we bring in on uh, our Black business and entrepreneur and yeah. basically transmitting their knowledge right. to, to people out there. Who, you know, and I hope what you share with people today really will uh, advance, inspire them to really step into their own dreams, uh, to make, the, to shape this world the way they want it to. So I had, I, I was very inspired by what you guys are doing, um, where you at. So uh, keep it up. Yeah, we'll be checking in. Yeah, it's not the first interview, right? Well, not the last interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first. First of many. No, so thank you so second, much for having us. I really got the last interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always catching me up. I'm like, see, that's that promise. Yeah, yeah, no, for right. sure, for sure, for sure. Right. Now we love, you know, we appreciate you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be tuned. Yeah, thank you both. Like this was super dope, and we're so blessed and happy to be here. Thank y'all. Yes, very oh, cool. Great. Thank you.